in a greenhouse session. So it's not just a matter of showing up for the day and, oh, we do some facilitation and some fun and games, not at all. In fact, the majority of work that we do happens before people even arrive. There's a lot of research into what's holding them back. Those could be cognitive biases or organizational dynamics or misalignment or lack of trust, anything really standing in their way. These labs are really customized to the specific situation. We find that there's not a one size fits all model. In one situation, it may make sense to have incredible data visualizations and all sorts of technology because that's what's gonna best activate the group. But in another situation, we may need to get them drawing on paper and banners. When we design greenhouse experiences, we harness the breadth and scale of Deloitte's business capabilities. This allows us to bring the precise insights our clients need to accelerate their efforts. I remember one lab where we really needed to immerse people in what the future of healthcare could look like. I can imagine how strange it must have been for those executives to walk into the room and see a bed. And instead of us saying, well, what if we had, we could say, why don't you go lie down and see how it feels. We're trying to have them suddenly see things differently and once they've seen it, they can't not see it. It's as if you had a real life experience, it becomes a deeper part of your memory and you're able to recall it much more vividly. It's really hard to summarize the Deloitte Greenhouse experience in one sentence because it is science, it is technology, it is facilitation, it is environment, it's all of those things. But at the end of the day, having done thousands of these sessions, what it's really about is people and how they relate to ideas and how they relate to one another. That's what really matters. And that's the Deloitte Greenhouse. Makes me all warm and fuzzy. Um, <laughs> so uh, certainly there's a few videos on YouTube around uh, the greenhouse, uh, but from a sort of history perspective, we currently have uh, seven across Canada and uh, one in, in Chile that is part of our network. Uh, globally, I think there's 75, but I could be cut on that. Um, so we do have them uh, globally as well as um, sort of there's seven offices uh, across Canada. Um, and, and literally, it's an opportunity to bring clients together to really look at things differently to give them uh, an opportunity to think differently and to explore uh, their most complex challenges in a way that they didn't think possible. And so we try to tap into the five senses. Um, uh, we'll be doing four at Dalhousie because I don't think we're allowed to have the smell <laughs> because of restrictions, but um, we certainly uh, work through the design down to every detail, uh, even including the food. So the menus are specific to the clients, um, oftentimes we'll do breakouts that are uh, very specific uh, and creative. So we've had a cocktail hour where folks were creating drinks based on their business chemistry, which is a bit of a Deloitte personality um, assessment. And so really looking for ways to engage the team uh, in a way that's different so that they can leave all those boardroom um, stifling sort of thoughts and inhibitions behind them and um, give them the opportunity to think about things differently. There's a question about the Chilean office. So Deloitte is uh, for Canada is Deloitte Canada and Chile. So we fall under the same hat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's part of our inclusive Canadian network, even though it's in Chile. <laughs> so that's why we call it out. <laughs> All right, and I will hand it over to you to wax poetic and to wow the crowds. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Kara. Um, sorry, I think there's some loud traffic going by, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, so I'll be building on what the greenhouse is and also starting to share what some of the projects that I've worked on and tie them into the greenhouse framework, uh, which is the Breakthrough Manifesto on your screen right now. So the Breakthrough Manifesto comprises of 10 major concepts that we weave into every experience and expect each of our participants to bring to the session. Um, so here they are. <laughs> we ask that you get real and strip away everything you bring um, so that you're your honest self at the session. 
We ask that you silence your cynic and you're open to everything that's presented to you. We do make a mess of the problem sometimes in that physical space, but definitely in the brainstorming space as well now that we're virtual to help discover that final solution. Um, and especially now that we are in a virtual setting as well, participants do get to sit with the problem since our sessions are designed now over the course of a few days. We'll usually do two to three hour sessions over the course of one to three days, um, as opposed to just one full day or two full day sessions back to back. So they can sit with that problem um, and we're not rushing to that final solution. As Kara said, we do always dial up the drama with a full sensory experience. And we do ask and force participants to check their edge because we do know the unknown is terrifying at times, but there's so much to gain from it um, and gain from exploring it. We don't necessarily play nice, but we don't mean that by not being nice, but we mean we call out the elephants in the room and make sure that we're not dancing around the issues that are actually present and on the table. And finally, we make change. So we're part of the team that helps to create those breakthrough and the aha moment. And I think I see my chat flaring up, so there might be a question in there. Um, we're so excited to have the Delight Greenhouse. Yeah, I'm also very excited to see the physical space. <laughs> I'm also very excited. All right, so now before we actually jump in to some of the stuff that I've done, um, we wanted to share one of the exponential technologies that we're using, which is actually what you see on your screen right now, Nariva. So, if you could all take out your phones, everybody on the call, take out your cell phone, open up the camera application, and hover the camera over the QR code in the bottom left corner. So that little black and white square, you might need to get kind of close to the screen. You'll have a pop down appear from the top of the screen that says Safari Span Workspace if you're on um, your mobile browser. Click on that and you'll end up on a virtual post-it note. So this is what we use a lot of the time in the greenhouse to have these brainstorming sessions. And I know I went over them quickly, but if all of you could take a second to share which one of those breakthrough manifesto cards most resonated with you and why that's the case. Just kind of curious to know what resonates and what might not. And if anyone's having problems, um, you can also just type the code that's underneath the QR code into Safari or whatever web browser you, you're using. Don't be nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> And remember, we're still nice, just <laughs> checking. <laughs> Get real, make a mess, awesome. And then the nice thing with Nariva as well, and really is great for brainstorming for us in the greenhouse, is we can cluster and make everything um, organized on the screen. We can also color code post-it notes. So if you want to try it underneath it, uh, you'll see there's the four quad of colors. You can change the color of your post-it note. You can put images in. Um, and it's a great way to have fun activities like this, but also to have those deeper and meaningful conversations where people can actually put their responses in um, anonymous, anonymously. So it's not actually logged to them. Um, but I am going to open it up. Did anyone want to talk about, I didn't cluster these fast enough as I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> and usually in the greenhouse, we have someone on the back end of tech uh, helping to organize so that whoever's talking doesn't have to think and do both. So it is a full collaborative team effort, uh, which is great as well. But did anyone want to unmute and say which one resonated with them and why? Anyone brave? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, I definitely thought the dial up the drama one resonated most yeah. with me because I find that usually you remember things when you're super, like when you're overly stimulated. Definitely. Definitely. That's awesome. Thanks, Sabrina. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you too. <laughs> and I was, did someone else go to unmute as well? Yeah, I can, I can say mine if, um, if no one else wants to say theirs. Um, I thought the um, um, making, a making a mess and getting real was really interesting. I wrote addressing the elephant because when you said that as part of the um, getting real, that really resonated with me. That really resonated with me because I think that that kind of holds people back a lot of the time when there's kind of those um, uncomfortable things that aren't really being addressed. It can really hold back from advancing, making um, great ideas and collaborating. So that, yeah, that definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for coming off mute. 
brave. <laughs> it's always awkward when you're on a call and you ask people to share back and everyone's like, crickets, <laughs> <laughs> which happens a lot. All right, so thank you everyone for participating in that board um, and for unmuting and sharing. But what I'm going to do now is kind of talk about and bring it to life with um, a lab that I actually helped lead and facilitate and support out of Toronto. Uh, and it was the Civic Action Forum. And this one's great because it was a public forum so I can actually talk about it as opposed to some of the other client stuff that I'm on and can't um, specifically <laughs> have a conversation about. Um, so I'll give you a brief overview and then I'm gonna link it back to how we integrate all of the Breakthrough Manifesto into a, an actual client delivery session. So this was the Reaction Forum. Um, it was hosted by the Civic Action Team in Toronto, but they partnered with us as the Greenhouse to help with virtual delivery and facilitation. The entire conversation revolved about building the GTHA, or the Greater Toronto Hamilton Area, <laughs> back better together following COVID-19. So normally this would have been held in person over the course of a day or two, but we broke it into three virtual sessions over two days. So participants registered for one, two, or all three, and were welcome to come and participate as a larger plenary group. Um, and then we also use the breakout function in Zoom for more intimate and smaller discussions around specific problem frames. So Thursday morning, last Thursday morning actually, we uh, hosted the reemployment forum, and we explored how we could help youth and young adults both enter or re-enter the workforce. Thursday afternoon, we had dialogue and hosted the Mental Wellness Lab, where we looked at opportunities for communities and workplaces to build connections and support mental well-being, while building on new approaches that have come up during the pandemic and also addressing those that might still be missing. And then finally, Friday morning, we had the Trust Lab, where groups explored the physical, community, digital, and institutional levels of trust that we need to sustain as we both physically re-engage and also seek to build inclusive and safe communities coming out of COVID. So each of the sessions actually had the exact same format. Um, we began by getting connected to the technology with an icebreaker, a board member from Civic Action got everyone geared up and excited about the session. And then participants were broken out into one of eight smaller discussion groups um, uh, that had a specific problem frame. So we had some really meaningful brainstorming and discussions in each of these groups and actually came up with eight individual action plans uh, from each of the three sessions, so 24 total. We wrapped up the, each of the sessions um, by coming back to that main plenary space as a larger, broader group. Uh, and everyone shared back their action statement, depending on timing. Some days we didn't get to do the share back. And then we were closed out by another board member to finish off the session. Um, it was honestly really amazing for me personally to be able to sit in um, and engage with the groups and facilitate um, over the course of the three days. So now how did we actually make this happen? So here's what I'll bring it back to our breakthrough manifesto. So step one, this is important for the participants, but also for us in the greenhouse as well, is enlisting a motley crew of people. So it's great because having a diverse group helps to um, diversify the thought uh, and create some really meaningful dialogue because everyone has a unique perspective that they're bringing to the conversation. So a bit of a silver lining to COVID-19 is the fact that we're virtual. So it doesn't matter where we are as a greenhouse team to be able to support one another. So this civic action lab was actually done by myself, um, a senior manager in Toronto, and then um, a member of the Ottawa team. And the three of us collaborated virtually to build out this entire two day session. Um, but this is also important for participants. So any of the sessions that we host, we ask for a diverse group of individuals so we can have that really rich conversation and make sure we're getting as much as we can out of the sessions. So I've grouped these four together um, because they all are kind of intertwined and how we did it in the civic action session is before we ramped into the day and got everyone excited about the conversation, we had um, like a group, what word am I looking for? Like, a, like ground rules at the start of the session that we went through just to get everybody embodied in the space and comfortable with the conversations we were gonna have. So we reminded everyone to get real. Like this is really difficult, a really difficult conversation and most of the ones that we host in the greenhouse are really tough conversations. So we ask that they're real with themselves, bringing their honest selves to the conversation. We ask that they silence their cynic and allow every conversation to be open and honest. Um, we ask that they check their edge I know that discomfort is really hard, but that's where you get into that growth zone, which I know Dan will definitely talk about at some point to you, um, and strip away everything as well. 
So you set aside whatever you think you know um, and listen to what others are bringing up to the table. Um, and again, that's important for us while we build out these sessions, the sessions ourselves as a greenhouse team, because everyone has experienced something different, but also while we're having this dialogue with participants, we ask that they bring this and listen to everything that everyone is saying um, and try not to shut anyone down as well. So we also preface this by sending out some pre-work to participants. So before they even got into the session, we got them excited about it and made them recognize how important this dialogue was. So we had sent out a YouTube video, a couple articles, and then some things we asked them to do or reflect on so that they were ready and prepared for the session um, and had to put some thought around it as well. And with this, we also in the session have those icebreakers at the start, um, which are really important and seem like they're kind of trivial and fun, but they really help to break down barriers and humanize a group, especially in a virtual setting. So what we had done that day is we had over, I think there were over close to 100 people on each of the calls. Um, and we broke everybody on the call out into groups of two so they could virtually speed meet somebody else on the call that they had never met before. And they had a minute and a half to just share back like, what's your superpower? nothing crazy and just light, simple conversation. But then the second one, we brought it back a little bit deeper to what our conversation was in the day and they broke out again, met a second person. Um, and it just helps to create a more human aspect, lightens the mood a little bit before we get into these heavy conversations and allows people to be more comfortable in the space. So don't play nice or don't be nice as some of you had put onto the board. Um, so in the greenhouse with this conversation, we obviously knew that how deep and rich the conversation was around these topics. But sometimes clients come into these sessions and say that X is the problem. But when we get in, we recognize that that's not the underlying issue that we need to tackle. And there's something deeper under the surface. So we really make sure that we have the conversations with the clients and teams to make sure we're having the dialogue and actually attacking the root at hand or the question at hand. And there have been points where facilitators have had to pivot an entire session to create dialogue around what the issue actually is and not what they thought it was going to be coming into the session. Yes, it is not unheard of to get into a session and 45 minutes in go, well, that agenda is not gonna work anymore because this is actually the real problem. Uh, and sort of course correct and think on your feet pretty quick um to get them to where they need to be uh the good thing is we always know sort of where we need to end from a, what outputs we're looking to achieve so as long as we get them there uh there are times when that agenda goes out the window uh, unfortunately uh, sooner than we would like <laughs> yeah but the facilitators that i've seen that have had to flip it have done it so fast on their feet it's really impressive <laughs> very quick thinking um, so make a mess. As I said before, just breaking down the breakthrough manifesto in the physical space, there have been times where we actually are physically making a mess. Um, I went to Toronto before COVID-19 happened for a signature experience. It's uh, like a winter camp themed experience where you learn about the greenhouse and Deloitte professionals can come in and learn about it as well. And one of the activities we did was with fake snowballs and we had to throw these snowballs around the room and then answer questions based on whoever picked them up. Um, but now in the physical space or the virtual space, um, we're making a mess more so with our brainstorming. So with civic action, we started off our small intimate group with an idea frenzy. So we use Nariva, same as we did today, and you were all posting in post-it notes. We got everybody connected to the tech um, and everyone just silently reflected. We put some music on in the background for like three, four minutes, and they just put up as many ideas as they could. So on the back end, we try to organize them as best we can, but it helps to unlock thinking um, and gets everybody to think as much or greater outside of the box <laughs> than they may orig originally do just by saying, okay, come up with one idea. Uh, living with the problem. Again, this is nice in a virtual space because as I said before, uh, sessions were usually just held over the course of a single day or two days back to back. But now in a virtual space, we can have multiple sessions because no one wants to sit on a Zoom call for eight hours. Um, we usually do them in two to three hour increments over the course of a few days. So it really lets people sit with that problem um, and take some time to digest it before coming back for the second session or the second day. With this instance of civic action in each lab having a specific topic, with the pre-read, we were able to give them the chance to think about it ahead of time and live with the problem and digest the information so that by the time they came to the uh, session, uh, they had already seen it beforehand 
and had some time to live with it, digest it, understand it, and then bring their thoughts to the table. And we ask that they do this just so we don't rush to the solution because not everything is a clear A to Z. It might take a little while to actually get to where you wanna go. Uh, dial up the drama. This is one of my favorites and I'm gonna go away from civic action for a second because Kara and I were working on a lab before um, this happened. <laughs> it was gonna be so fun. And it was with a provincial ministry of health um, and it was a garden and grow theme. So we always try to uh, put metaphors into the session. Civic action, it was a forum, so we didn't really do themes, but at this point we've had, or I've seen um, a matrix theme. I did back to the future the last two days I was in a session. I have seen basketball as a theme. Um, and then the one Karen I did was garden and grow. And it was fun because I actually got to build out the entire experience design. Uh, and was partnered with an experienced designer from elsewhere in the greenhouse team and it was exactly that creating a invested experience so that when participants walk through the door yes we're talking about this really important topic but it helps to lighten it and build that metaphor in so that um, we can look at it in a bit of a different way and add a bit of creativity to unlock that thinking so for this one, um, Gardening Grow, we were going to dress Kara up as a happy gardener. So we had ordered like a gardening smock and rubber boots and a, a straw <laughs> hat so that she was fully embedded in the theme. Uh, we had worked with a florist so that when participants showed up, there was a massive flower cart on the main level with a board um, and their uh, name tags were all seed packets. Um, and then we just worked that theme all the way through the session so that it was in every aspect, all the way down to the pen holders as little ceramic pots. So it's a lot of fun to create these, but at the end of the day, we're still trying to create that dialogue and create the creativity to have um, that conversation unlocked. And Kara, it sounded like you were gonna jump in. Yeah, I was just gonna say, and the session was truly around their initiatives that they needed to drive. And so we were thinking about how are we gonna grow those initiatives broadly sort of from the little seeds or the little sort of initial thoughts that they had and then how do we help them to grow and so the the sort of grow piece um was really instrumental to what we were trying to achieve overall so it just made sense and yeah there were uh apart from my get up uh there were everywhere you went uh there were the physical manifestations but then as we talked about um the journey and what we were doing during the session we actually had garden plots where they would plant their initiatives and then what would they need from a from a sort of growing perspective in order for those initiatives to take hold and what would they need to flourish so what were the the uh, blockages or challenges that we would need to address and so the entire meeting from beginning to end was based around that metaphor and so when we talked about everything they were doing it all fit into the metaphor so it wasn't just the um, the physical manifestation of flowers everywhere it was also how we talked about what they were trying to do and so again it's that uh, purposefully playful piece that gets people to think about things differently um, than they would normally if they were just sitting around the table mm -hmm. exactly Thanks, Kara. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get to see this one through because of COVID, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm excited for when the delivery actually happens. <laughs> um, and then the last one is make change. So our big thing in the greenhouse is creating those breakthrough moments and having the aha moments for the client at the end of the day. Um, so we're just trying to shatter that plan and evolve, make a dent and create that for them so that they leave the session feeling like they've built and learned um, and also have some actionable items that they may be able to take forward. And there's also been a lot of times where we think that we're going to get a specific outcome, but then multiple outcomes come out of a session as well because we've uncovered some underlying, um, I don't wanna say issue, but underlying um, problem, I guess, that wasn't initially present. So yeah, that's, that's how we, make things happen in the greenhouse and kind of how we brought civic action to life last week. But now, um, if you have any questions and if you wanted to use the technology again, the quick share is the exact same, so you don't need to scan it again, um, but you can just post them into the board <laughs> or, <you laughs> or <can> ask. ask. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or unmute. <laughs> We're not scary. Is it okay if I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm just curious, basically, how you start constructing these sessions in terms of like choosing theme and creating the agenda. Like, do you usually have 
a person from an organization that comes to you and kind of gives you a starting point in terms of ideas? Or do you, is it kind of a rolling project where you're working with someone for a while and then eventually finish? Yeah, so we would say it's usually a four to six uh, week lead time. We prefer six because uh, it really is a co-creation process. So we um, will talk to the account team. So internally, someone from Deloitte would come to us and say, I have a client that's got this big issue and we don't know how to deal with it. So we're bringing it to you. Um, we would spend a bit of time to understand from the account team perspective, the client, but then we would get the client on the call to say, hey, let's understand sort of what's actually getting in your way. Because a lot of the times, um, the things that the account team would look for are different than what we would look for or listen for. Um, and so we can poke and prod and start to sort of peel back that onion about what it actually is. Um, and we would typically have two to three, uh, depending on the scope, uh, up to five co-creation calls with the client to make sure that um, whoever is sort of leading from the client side is aligned with what we're doing. And then we do, usually with virtual, we do more dry runs. Certainly in person, we would do at least one dry run. But with virtual, I, we tend to do two to three per session just because of the technology we want to make sure. If that not we, more. <laughs> yeah, that we're engaging people correctly. Um, but it does tend to be, it, uh, it doesn't make any sense for us to design it without the client involved simply because uh, through talking to them, we can uncover lots of stuff that the account team wouldn't necessarily think to ask or think to look for. So it's, uh, it's about a four to six week lead time because of the, the level of co-creation that we slide in there. And, and the metaphor, a lot of the time, it, uh, it almost presents itself. Um, and so once we've got a sense as to what they're trying to do, we'll do a bit of the behind the scenes brainstorming around what could it be, and then we'll take those back to the client. And whichever one resonates with them is the one we'll go with. And then, um, yeah, the Matrix one was pretty fun because they all, although it was virtual, they all had like Matrix avatars and <laughs> yeah, lots of red blue of pills and <laughs> yeah, that one was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, do you know how much about, uh, do you know much about consulting before you applied? Oh, that's you. For me. Um, okay. So <laughs> to be honest, I, I did do a lot of research on consulting, but I hadn't actually planned to go into consulting. I don't think I even had applied to the Deloitte consulting um, application when it came out. Um, but I saw this one and was like, well, that sounds really cool. <laughs> but it, it it isn't a ton of consulting as well. Like we're not the content experts in it, but um, it has been really interesting learning about the process and you learn so much about the content as well as you go through the process of building out each experience. And my favorite part, um, I don't know. I feel like I've had a lot of favorites, <laughs> but honestly, COVID-19 has been like obviously terrible, but it's had such a silver lining and that I can collaborate and work with so many people across the board. So like, love you, Kara. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but um, no, it's been awesome because I get to partner with and support so many things across the country. And like we do an internal thing called Breakthrough Mondays right now, um, just as a learning service to the Deloitte community on a weekly basis. And I've been able to be part of the team that spearheads that. And it's not just me, like it's just me from Atlantic, but then there's also someone from the Kitchener Waterloo team, Ottawa, I think Chile, um, and I can't remember if I said Toronto, but it's awesome because now we can work so collaboratively and work in this virtual space anywhere. So that is admittedly, Rika took a big leap of faith when she took the role. So I remember when we were interviewing and I said, look, I actually don't know what the first year is going to be. Hopefully we will have a space, but we might not. And so uh, I made the commitment that I would do what I could to make sure that her experience was meaningful and that she would get uh, lots of different uh, experiences, but um, kudos to her because there was a bit of a leap of faith because uh, originally we had thought the space would be good to go January um, and that didn't happen and then COVID happened and so um, it, it, the intention of what the internship was going to be is not at all what it turned out to be. Uh, but but you were also yeah. very transparent about that. And so I knew going into it that I would have to be very adaptable and ready to 
kind of do anything, <laughs> which is great because I've learned a lot from the experience and having been jumping from different things, it's really, it's been beneficial. Um, so I have a, go for it. I was just going to say our space, so there's a question around only accessible to employees in Halifax. Uh, so ours is for the Atlantic region. And so once borders are open, um, we will be focused on New Brunswick, PEI, Newfoundland, and uh, Nova Scotia. So all of our clients from there will, uh, as much as possible, come here. But certainly it's open to uh, any Deloitte clients across the country because we've got them. There's, uh, they're building one in uh, Vancouver. There's one Calgary, Toronto, um, Montreal, Ottawa, and Chile. That's it, isn't it? Did I miss one? I think you got them all. KW, Kitchener Waterloo. KW. Yep. Um, um, I also so just yeah, want so to say to that as well that it's a really cool space, but it's not just a meeting space as well, correct. which is kind of nice that it's not at Deloitte because a lot of people tend to think of the greenhouse as just being a really cool innovation space because we have a discovery zone with like AI and virtual reality and all kinds of really cool exponential tech as well. So, and all of our boards are like smart boards and it's just a really cool room or multiple rooms depending on the location. Um, but it is it is specifically for these greenhouse sessions where we have these discussions. It's not just a cool space for like a lot of the people think that it's just a cool space to come and like work in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we'll serve, we can do any of our labs pop up. So if folks can't make it to Halifax, we can get to, because I suspect Newfoundland, I'm not sure everybody will make it over, but we can certainly go over there, stand up a lab that will be close to the same experience as they would have if they were in the space. Um, so just why is it called the greenhouse? So originally in its, in its infancy, probably seven years ago, um, it was sort of a incubator for innovation and new ideas. And so it was sort of where the new ideas grow. Um, so it's a, it's a bit goofy, uh, we admit that, but that's <laughs> where it came from, from, uh, I'm going to grow the ideas. Uh, so that's why the greenhouse is the greenhouse. <laughs> Another metaphor. And then yes. Will has a question. <laughs> hey, Rika, it's Will here. Hey. It's, uh, good to hear you speak and uh, you a great job. Um, Thank I, you. I've been my, uh, MBA mentor and, uh, really enjoyed talking to her about the program. Um, so my question was, is just wondering what sort of problems you solve in the greenhouse. Like it sounds like a lot of these problems would be applicable around like team building about like uh, not playing nice and just building trust among your team. But I guess like what sort of other problems are you guys looking to solve? Is it like innovation issues that, that the company is looking to go through or yeah, just what's been your experience? Mm -hmm. It pretty much runs the gamut. So when we're thinking of what, and we call them sort of those adaptive challenges, we think of what are those things where there isn't an answer? So um, it's not things like which, which technology do we want to use, where there's a, a known answer that we could help folks sort of navigate to. Um, it is around things like strategy. Um, we spent time mm -hmm. uh, around sort of certainly out here with, um, strategy for liquor corps with um, sort of edibles, right? So what does that mean for us uh, from an edible perspective? And what does that mean to our strategy? What does that mean for what we need to do and how we need to do things differently? Um, spend time, uh, there's a, a lot of the team issues, absolutely. And a lot of the times you'll get into a lab about something like edibles and then you start to uncover that there's a whole trust issue thing that needs to get mm -hmm. sorted out before you can actually implement anything around edibles or those sorts of things. But um, yeah. it really runs the gamut. I've been in um, lots of what, like we've been in strategy, I've been in alignment, I've been in sort of those, the art of the possible. So from, you know, a healthcare perspective, where are we going from a healthcare perspective? And COVID has sort of given healthcare a bit of a push in a way that they uh, probably were resisting from virtual um, and remote uh, diagnostics. And so what does that look like now that we're here and forced to be here, what does that look like going forward and how do hospitals and healthcare um, get themselves set up to actually do it effectively and meaningful. And, and so there's lots of 
I, yeah, I'm like, we do just about anything. <laughs> and then um, just to, oh, I was going to say, as Rika said, we're not the content owners. And so we make sure the folks with the knowledge are in the room. We just make sure that we design an experience that will get people to think about it and uh, explore things differently, as well as uh, because we're not the subject or the subject matter expert and because it's not technically our client, we can get away with a lot more pushing um, around questions, uh, calling BS, those sorts of things in the meeting that the client uh, or the account team wouldn't necessarily be able to do because mm -hmm. we're sort of this extra body that um, after the session will support them as much as possible. But, you know, if they walk away sort of not liking us, but having a great experience, that's perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to build on that a little bit, like we facilitate the dialogue. So like Kara said, we can create that pushback and have the conversations that the account team might not know or be comfortable having since we are external. Um, and then just for example, some of the ones that I've worked on recently, this week I just finished a two session lab Monday, Tuesday, and that one was the, um, the back to the future theme. And that one was about what does the future of this organization look like in 2023? So like it was around a bunch of different dialogues. We had problem statements and breakout groups for each of the different topics that we were uncovering. Um, and then over the course of the two days, we built that out. And while there were a ton of action items that came out of it, that they can now take back and figure out how they're gonna move forward. So as Kara said, it's tackling those adaptive challenges and not just like, oh, we need to do a cloud update or like an infrastructure build or like something along those lines. It's a more deeper rooted issue. Um, but does also involve a lot of difficult discussions that we help to facilitate. Um, and then Eva, um, yeah. I, uh, I'm i sorry, I'm just going to jump in there. I just got a text from Dan that uh, he's got another meeting happening right now where uh, Bob Mann uh, is waiting for you guys. Um, oh. <laughs> and that's about academic integrity. So, um, and I guess he's got a hard stop as well at one. Uh, but I want to I want to jump in. I want to say, Kara, Rika, thank you so much. I think this is incredible. It's so innovative and fresh and new, and such a, a fantastic way to to work with clients and solve these complex problems. Uh, I I find it fascinating. Thank you for your time and your input and and uh, the great examples you've shown. Uh, if uh, some of the folks want to reach out to you at some point during the term, is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And okay. yeah, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, once we're on site, which will hopefully be um, August ish, uh, certainly if you're so, you know, throw us anything you need, we're happy to help and answer questions. Thank you so much. And we really hope. Uh, I talked to Carrie about this uh, a couple of months ago, but we would love to see a posting again for a residency, uh, you know, coming yep. up in May. Our timeline has changed a little bit, but uh, it's, it's a, you know, a, a fantastic opportunity. And of course, uh, Rika spoke to that. And, uh, but guys, thanks so much for your time. Awesome. Yeah, thank thank you. you for having us. All right. <laughs> Good luck with the rest of your day, everybody, <laughs> and the rest of the week. <laughs> thanks so much. Good one. Okay. <laughs>